Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Thursday, the 1st of December, 2022. And yes, it is already December. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. This service is streamed live on weekday mornings at 9 a.m. exclusively on Zoom. To participate in the live service and to access the service leaflet for today's service, just visit Good Shepherd's website, goodsheponline.org. Click on the worship drop-down list and select prayer. For the service leaflet, just look for today's date. The link for the live service appears immediately above those for the leaflets. So good morning, Letty, and good morning, Pam. We have a small but faithful remnant this morning. I'm sure thousands others will join us as we go along, but why don't we get started here with morning prayer in this uh, Wednesday, Thursday, in the first week of Advent. Watch, for you know not when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Good morning, Joan, and good morning, Wendy. Thank you for joining us this morning. Our invitatory psalm this morning is Psalm 100, Jubilate Deo. We shall say the Jubilate together in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 18, verses 1 through 20, which we shall say together in unison. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my stronghold, my crag, and my haven. My God my rock in whom I put my trust, my shield, the horn of my salvation, and my refuge. You are worthy of praise. I will call upon the Lord, and so shall I be saved from my enemies. The breakers of death rolled over me, and the torrents of oblivion made me afraid. The cords of hell entangled me, and the snares of death were set for me. I called upon the Lord in my distress and cried out to my God for help. He heard my voice from his heavenly dwelling. My cry of anguish came to his ears. 
The earth reeled and rocked. The roots of the mountains shook. They reeled because of his anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils and a consuming fire out of his mouth. Hot burning coals blazed forth from him. He, par he parted the heavens and came down with a storm cloud under his feet. He mounted on cherubim and flew. He swooped on the wings of the wind. He wrapped darkness about him. He made dark waters and thick clouds his pavilion. From the brightness of his presence through the clouds burst hailstones and coals of fires. The Lord thundered out of heaven. The Most High uttered his voice. He loosed his arrows and scattered them. He hurled thunderbolts and routed them. The beds of the seas were uncovered and the foundations of the world laid bare. At your battle cry, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and grasped me. He drew me out of great waters. He delivered me from my strong enemies and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into an open place and rescued me because he delighted in me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. That psalm is sort of reminiscent of the uh, eruption of uh, Mauna Loa, which happened this week after almost 40 years. So with fire coming into the sky, etc. So we are in a new season, season of Advent, and we have a new Old Testament reading, which we started actually on Sunday, for those of you who read at home. Uh, and it was briefly interrupted yesterday because yesterday was a feast day, the Feast of St. Andrew. But here we are in chapter two of Isaiah, which we began with verse 1-1 on Sunday. Uh, and just as a reminder, this is the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah uh, was a contemporary of Micah's uh, and wrote in the days following the fall of the northern kingdom of Israel uh, by the Assyrians. He was a Judean. He was from Judah uh, and he was writing in Judah. But Judah was a weakened vassal state at the time. And so there was a sense that there was a reckoning going on. And he is writing to this. Uh, the name Isaiah literally means uh, the Lord is my salvation. Uh, Yeshu in, uh, in, is, uh, is salvation in uh, Hebrew, and Yah is a diminutive for Jehovah, uh, the sacred name of God. So actually in Hebrew, Yeshua is how you pronounce it. Uh, so, and in today's reading, we hear a common theme from Isaiah, which is the infinite distance between the highness of the Lord and the humbleness of people on earth, which is only bridged for the people of Israel because of God's grace. So let's listen in to a reading from the book of Isaiah. For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up and high, against all the cedars of Lebanon, lofty and lifted up, and against all the oaks of Bashan, against all the high mountains, and against all the lofty hills, against every high tower, and against every fortified wall, against all the ships of Tarshish, and against all the beautiful craft, the haughtiness of people shall be humbled and the pride of everyone shall be brought low and the Lord alone will be exalted on that day. The idols shall utterly pass away. Enter the caves of the rocks and the holes of the ground from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty. 
when he rises to terrify the earth. On that day, people will throw away to the moles and to the bats their idols of silver and their idols of gold, which may made for themselves to worship, to enter the caverns of the rocks and the clefts in the crags from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty. When he rises to terrify the earth, turn away from mortals who have only breath in their nostrils, for of what account are they? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to our Old Testament reading this morning is uh, the Song of Moses, Cantamus Deo, which we shall say together in unison. I will sing to the Lord for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God and I will praise him. The God of my people and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. I am feeling much better today. Not well, but better. So welcome, Kathy, and welcome, Sherry. So glad you could join us this morning. So in our New Testament reading, we are in that portion of the gospel, according to Luke, between, that falls between Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and the Last Supper. Uh, and so we are in Holy Week. Okay, and uh, in this time, Jesus is in the temple teaching, and he is being tested by various factions. Uh, on uh, Monday, he was tested by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and today we hear he is tested by the Sadducees. So a reading from the gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And so in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. 
And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him, all of them are alive. Then some of the scribes answered, teacher, you have spoken well. For they no longer dared to ask him another question. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love the battling factions there. The scribes uh, are aligned with the Pharisees who do believe in the resurrection. So they're glad that Jesus did a smackdown on the Sadducees, but they're not glad that he's doing a smackdown on them as well. So I don't think there's a Hebrew for smackdown. So, okay. Our response to our New Testament reading is the glory in excelsis, glory to God, which we shall say together in unison. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The collect of the day is the collect for Advent Sunday. Our bishop would remind us that in the olden days, uh, as we went through Advent, they would say the collect for the second Sunday and the third Sunday of Advent, but they would also say this collect for the first Sunday of Advent, all throughout Advent, because it is such a wonderful representation of light and darkness and God coming among us. 
Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when we shall come again into his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our collect for Thursdays, a collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the night from the day, and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace. That, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And our prayer for this week, a prayer for protection. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants toward the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And one short note, uh, it is traditional at the beginning of an important season of the church year, that during that first week, you don't distract from the theme, in this case, Advent, by commemorating saints. It just sort of busies things up. You want to really focus on uh, Advent. And so that's why you don't hear us commemorating saints this week. So just so you know, next week, yes, okay. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Anyang, South Sudan, the Right Reverend Paul Tokmak Luol, Diocesan Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife, Kate. And our companion diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of Toliara, Madagascar, the Right Reverend Dr. Samachano Johnson Razafindra Lambo, Bishop. O oh God, you made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Bob and Pam, Darcy, Barbara, Marie, Jean, Peter, Jim and Jerry, Bonnie, and Charles and Kathy. We pray also today for our serve ministries, remembering especially prayer chain, that those facing trouble or life-challenging experiences may be supported by the prayers of the Good Shepherd community. And Kairos Prison Ministry, that those whose life circumstances have led to their imprisonment and the members of their families may know the love of Christ. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, <clears throat> either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. 
Letty asks our prayers for our friend Bill, who's battling back pain, one thing after another for Bill. And for our friend Lynn, who had sold shoulder surgery this week, and for her sister Becky, who is getting over COVID. Well, that's a tall order, but I think the Lord can handle it with the help of a prayer, an appropriate prayer for us. So this is the prayer for recovery from a sickness. O oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power that their sickness may be turned into health and our sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. I love that, turning their sickness into health and our uh, sorrow into joy. Turning sorrow into joy, right? I mean, that's got to be the thing. And Joan asks our prayers for Kaylee, who is also recovering from the flu. Strengthen your servant Kaylee, O Lord, to do what she has to do and to bear what she has to bear, that accepting your healing gifts, she may be restored to usefulness in your world with a thankful heart through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And to all of our sick friends, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I certainly give thanks for a slow but steady recovery for both Letty and me. You might've heard earlier, Letty had a coughing fit and had to leave the room during uh, morning prayer. We're both just sort of trying to improve incrementally and hopefully by the time we return to South Florida on Monday, we will be fully cured of our ailments. So um, what else shall we pray for this morning? Um, I would like to pray and give thanks for last night's, and maybe one of you can tell me of this after our service is done, um, our Charles Dickens special Advent gathering where apparently about two dozen people got together and read uh, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol in Parts. This is a tradition that comes from my background and I really look forward to being a part of the next one on Wednesday. But why don't we uh, say a prayer for family and personal life, including our church family and this our morning prayer gathering family. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you set the solitary in families. We commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we pray, every root of bitterness, the desire of vain glory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness knit together in constant affection, those who in holy wedlock have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all that we may evermore be kindly affection one to another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And now let us continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, you may show forth your praise, not only with our lips,
but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I'm a little huskier this morning than usual, but much better than yesterday, as Kathy pointed out. Um, have a blessed day. Uh, if you are ailing, I hope you feel better. If you are welling, I hope that you well over with joy. And as you go through life today and you greet your neighbor, be kind to him or her. One never knows what another is going through in this life. Amen.